Welcome to Wisdom Talk Radio, a collaborative community of explorers in conscious living. To live a passionate life with vitality, with joy, aren't these things that each of us want? I do. Well, maybe you felt that the fallout from COVID-19 has interrupted you're living a passionate life. But how can you reconnect with that? How can you claim joy and vitality in this moment? Stay tuned for our special guest today, Dr. Mara Carpell, and learn from someone who has traveled this journey. Hi, I'm Laurie Seymour, host of Wisdom Talk Radio and CEO and founder of the Baca Institute. Head to the Baca Institute to discover your creative advantage by taking the Creative Innovator Quiz. Find out your personal Creative Innovator style so you can open your creative flow and make everything in life easier. For visionaries, innovators, company founders, and product designers, optimize your ability to create more in less time while enjoying every minute. That's possible, you know. Dr. Mara Carpell is a psychologist, author of the international bestseller, The Passionate Life, Creating Vitality and Joy at Any Age. She's host of the radio show, Dr. Mara Carpell and Your Golden Years, passionate living motivator for Compassionate Austin, and contributor to Thrive Global, Huffington Post, and Savannah East. She works with adults of all ages and specializes with seniors, caregivers, and veterans. Dr. Mara has now launched telehealth consulting to help those looking to reconnect with their passion and purpose during these uncertain times. And don't we need that? Because these are uncertain times. Welcome, Mara. I'm really delighted you're here. Thank Welcome you. to Wisdom Talk Radio. Thank you so much for having me, Laurie. I'm really excited to be here and to speak with you today. I really Great. I know you've got lots to share with our listening audience, and I'm eager to hear what you've got to share. <clears throat> and I'd like to begin in a place of you reflecting on your own journey. <clears throat> and what was it in your own life, your life in particular, that led you to write this book, The Passionate Life? creating vitality and joy at any age. Okay. So <laughs> the, not to uh, not to date myself or age myself, but it started a long time ago. It's okay. We're all friends here. <laughs> so um, I began college um, going for my degree in engineering, civil engineering. Um. I wasn't really excited about it, but you know, at that time it felt like I needed to find some direction and it was the eighties. I started college mm -hmm. in 1980 and it felt like, um, that was a, that was a good thing to do because women were being hired in engine as engineers and making good money. And I was good in math. So that was it. <laughs> um, but I wasn't passionate about it and discovered that I really didn't enjoy all, all those math classes in college. And a uh, friend of mine in my dorm suggested that I, um, she had seen a sign for peer counseling and um, for interviews to join the peer counseling center and be trained to be mm -hmm. a peer counselor. And she said to me, you know, you know, you're always listening to all of our problems and you seem to be really, <laughs> maybe you should do that. I thought of you and I saw the sign and, and that really struck me that that would be mm -hmm. something I would enjoy doing. So I interviewed, I got into the program, I did the training. And then the first day that I was a peer counselor, somebody came, a student came in to the peer counseling center and he was suicidal and we would wow, train trial by fire exactly and he was the only he was the only client i ever had right hardly any nobody came during my shift but this one 
one young man. Yeah, definitely trial by fire. And we were trained, you know, not to do therapy, but to evaluate if someone was suicidal and then to convince them to come with me to the professionals at the at the um, student counseling center where they had the, you know, social workers and therapists trained. Mm -hmm. So I spent about two hours with him, um, convincing him that, you know, obviously he came in for a reason. He wanted to live and he walked with me, he eventually walked with me over to the, the counseling center. And I remember that feeling of, just that buzz going through my body that I had just saved someone's life potentially. Mm -hmm. And this felt really right. And it, that day I called up my parents and I said, I'm going for my PhD in clinical psychology. <laughs> you weren't just going to get a bachelor's. You're going to go all the way. Right. <laughs> Bravo you. My parents mm. loved education, but my mom said to me, what, isn't there an easier way? <laughs> <laughs> Can't you do this more quickly? I said, no, no, I'm going to go all the way. So, you know, I did it. I got into graduate school and I was, you know, it was, it was rough, um, but I made it through. And finally, I was living that dream. And when I, I decided that I wanted to work with older adults, um, that was another passion. It was another one of those things where I said, that's what I need to do. And when I was finally doing it, I discover that I, you know, I was waking up during the night feeling like I wasn't doing everything that I was supposed to do. And, here and so I that was the, that was the, uh, well, let me, let me backtrack a bit. What I'm hearing is the way in which you, you listened, you listened to your own inner calling and mm -hmm. where your passions were. So somehow you knew something that a lot of people don't. Right. I, I always felt that when I get that feeling like this is it, then that, that I had to follow that. Because if I didn't, then I was uncomfortable. I, I just felt like things weren't right. So as hard as it was, I felt like I had to follow that. But now I was being woken up. And here I had gone through eight years of graduate school. And I was now being woken up like, what is wrong? I, you know, I did everything. I said, <laughs> <laughs> but what is it? <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, I made that decision when I was, you know, 20. And mm -hmm. now I was 30, 32, waking up during the night. So, you know, you, you, things change and your path sort of tweaks itself. And I didn't want to leave what I was doing, but I felt like there was more that I needed to do. And I didn't know what it was. And it wasn't as clear as it had been previously. So I had to really be open to exploring. And that's one of the things that I, always, that I encourage people in living a passionate life, to be open to exploring when you don't know what it is that you're looking for. How do you do that, though? How do you explore? Well, I, you know, I, at first it was uncomfortable, and then I allowed myself to be excited that I was on the brink of finding something new and to be curious. And so I just, you know, as opportunities came up to try something new, I just went with it. And I started, you know, I met people who would say, hey, do you want to try this? And it, that sounds really good. I was working in a nursing home where there was a art therapist who would come in. So I started, I started going to his art therapy classes for my lunch break and discovered that, you know, I really miss drawing. And that's oh. something that I, you know, so I started drawing again. Um, now that was, I was thinking maybe I would be an art therapist, but it didn't really lead me that way. But it led me to be, to realize I wanted to be more creative. That so was it was, it was your being willing to be active. In other words, not just get an idea or, you know, entertain ideas, but to actually follow through. Actually follow through and try it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it may not be that that's the thing. That right. may lead to something else. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, drawing, I think, even though that isn't my career, it opened me up. It opened up that creative side of me where I was willing to, you know, be more right brain 
I had mm-hmm. all, you know, I had to be analytic for all those years. Now I could be right brain again. And then started, you know, I, I started practicing Buddhism because I was introduced to that. And so, and that sort of opened me up and like, it just sort of, that opened me up to then move to Austin, Texas when I was given that. Ah. Uh, mm-hmm. When I came here, I realized I could do more and I could actually be more creative because it costs less to live here than it did in New York. Where wow. I wow. So, so what did that offer to you? <laughs> so, you know, when I, when I got here, I was, um, the idea of being on a radio, well, started with television. Uh-huh do a television show because, you know, nobody's doing what you're doing. You're an expert in geriatrics. And so I was like, I don't even like to watch myself on video, (laughs) but we did a one, we did a one-time live show on Austin local access television. Um, They were selling the company after that, but we did one show and it was live and, and, and the cameras were wrong. Everything was wrong. The makeup was wrong. Everything was wrong. But I felt that feeling again, like that buzzing feeling. Let's underline that for a moment. That buzzing feeling. Yes. That feeling in your body when you know that there's something you have to pay attention to. You know, it's not necessarily the thing. We don't even have to think about that, but it's something that you have to pay attention to. Uh, Right. And I said, I want to do more of this. Mm-hmm. Um, that I feel like I'm doing something right because yeah. I was, I was, I was still doing what I was trained to do. I was teaching about, you know, mental health and and growing older with joy and you know mm-hmm. healthfulness. Um, but I was doing it in a creative way, and I was bringing that creativity into it, and I was teaching which I felt like you know I always go I'm always telling people 